Hi guys, Anne here. It is November 2020 and this month we're learning how to blow shards. The only thing you'll need to blow shards is a blow pipe, which is very important. Uh, it needs to, of course, be a pipe all the way through, stainless steel. Uh, you can purchase them, I believe, on Devarty's website or Fran's Art Glass or anywhere you buy glass from. Uh, most of them have mandrels. Uh, you want to make sure that it's a blow pipe as opposed to a puffy mandrel with holes on the sides. Uh, it doesn't matter how big your uh, blow pipe is. This one is probably six or seven millimeters, uh, but it just happens to be the one that I have that I can find currently. I have smaller ones that work just as well. Uh, you just need to make sure that you can blow air all the, all the way through it. We're gonna, for this one, we're gonna use two glasses that most everybody has. Um, I'm gonna use ivory and I'm gonna use turquoise. Uh, with the ivory, because I like this, uh, and I happen to have some silver foil here, I'm going to roll my ivory through the silver foil once I've got it on my blue pipe. So I'm gonna start with a base of the turquoise and you can see where I've got a ring of glass around where I've blown other shards. That's where I'm going to heat up my end of my blowpipe here. And I'm going to coil my first coil of the turquoise around the end of my blowpipe. And then coming out away from the blowpipe, I'm going to continue to coil. This is what's called coil pot in the Bora world. I'm making a coil pot on the end of my blow pipe here so that I can blow this shard. I'm leaving this a bubble. This will end up being a bubble on the end of my blow pipe. And I'm just going to start tapering down towards the center. I don't want to leave a hole because then the air will just blow out the end. So you can see I went all the way to the end there and made my coil. Now, since it's all lumpy bumpy, I'm going to get rid of those lumpy bumpies before I try and put my ivory on top of it. I don't want it to get flippy floppy here. I don't want it to be like a wet fish. I want to uh, have control over this and just heat it enough so that those ridges and bumps come out of it so that I can smoothly apply my ivory and not lose that bubble that I've created on the inside there. Okay, so that's all nice and round. It's a little bubble. Now I'm going to put my ivory on top of that. Letting this cool down Letting that base cool down while I get my ivory ready so that that way it's warm but it's not soupy on underneath there. Go ahead and keeping that base out of the flame and just keeping my ivory rod in the flame, I'm overlapping and making that coil pot on the end over top of the turquoise that I just laid down. Now this is a dark ivory, I believe, but you could use whatever colors that you happen to have around. It doesn't have to be reactive glasses. It, it can be um, pretty much any color you have. So now I'm going to get the lumpy bumpies out of this. I made sure that I coil potted all the way down so that I don't have any turquoise just hanging out at the end there. get it nice and molten and then I'm going to roll it I'm going to let it um, cool down a little bit and then I'm going to roll it on top of my I my silver that I have down here just because I like the look of the silvered ivory I've got some moths here that have flown into my studio because it's nighttime and uh, they're gonna probably end up flittering into the flame like they always do and then dying a horrible death, which makes me sad, but I can't help it. 
All right, so that is done. Now I'm just gonna let it cool down a little bit so it doesn't just melt up my silver the second it touches it. And I'm gonna burnish that silver on so that I don't waste it. Okay, now my whole shard is covered in a silver foil. I'm going to heat up my shard again so that I can get it ready to blow. I'm melting this silver in as I'm doing this and that's going to give my ivory that uh, silvered ivory look. Alrighty, I believe that that's nice and molten all the way through. When you're blowing the shard, you want to make sure that you don't blow too quickly or too forcefully. You want to do a little puff first, see how molten your glass was and how easy it is going to be to blow. If it needs a second to, to set, then wait a second and then blow a little bit more and see. You don't want glass confetti. It's really important not to get glass into your lungs. All right, so now I'm going to give it a puff. And you see how I controlled that the whole time. I didn't let it get too thin in any particular spots. Um, there's one little spot here that's thin, but it's not, not confetti. You run the risk if you blow too hard, too fast, of getting that glass shards then into the air. This is gonna be an interesting one. You can already see all of the webbing from the silver. You can break your shards apart either in a little bucket, if you have little metal buckets, um, or you can do it on your workstation. You just don't want to pick them up with your fingers. You want to use your pliers. It's good to make little tins. Uh, I like to use the, you know, those little wedding tins that you give little favors in uh, as shard holders, and that way you can write on them what the recipe was. So in case you decide you like that shard a lot and would like to make it again, you would actually remember what you made that shard with. It's always beneficial. All right, so I'm just breaking this shard up a little bit more so that it's in more usable pieces and then we'll go ahead and we'll make a bead with it. So we have the inside of this shard is made with turquoise and the outside was a silvered ivory. You don't need to make it silvered. If you don't have any silver, just use ivory or you can use your own recipe. I like a lot of times I'll use the ivory on the inside and then a different color on the outside. So this is my shard. Okay, let's get ready to build a bead. I find that I like the shards on larger focal beads so that you can get more of the shard on there and see more of the reaction that it does. So we're gonna build a base bead. We'll just use our regular ivory here since we have some pretty silvered ivory. We'll make, oops. I've got some poppy ivory is what I've got. I noticed that when making my shard too. It was trying to pop off as well. All right, so I'm gonna make a focal bead. So that takes a few, few seconds to get that much glass onto my mandrel, especially when it's trying to take me out. This shrapnel. Everybody makes their base beads differently, so however you like to make your base bead, you go for it. I had a whole lot of fun with shards at around Easter time this past year. I made um, I made Easter eggs with them because, like I say, I like to use the shards on a large amount of glass, 
and I'm not much for focal beads. Um, so I was making them on Easter eggs. And since I moved this summer, I had to get rid of all of those shards that I had done up because I didn't have the time to put them away properly. And I was trying to clean off my studio at the last minute before I moved and that was not optimal. <laughs> but it is what it is. So I don't have any of those shards and I did not write down any of those uh, recipes. So this time apparently I'm going to make a cone bead. Who knew? I'm going to take one of my shards that I think is probably going to be big enough to go all the way around. I'm going to heat my base bead and tack my shard on. And then I'm going to use the heat and occasionally my uh, little magic wand here to convince the glass to go on the bead and not onto my um, mandrel. All right, so it's all on there. And now I'm just gonna heat it on there and try and get some webbing. So if you see little spots that have bubbles under them, concentrate the heat on those bubbles and see if you can't pop them. When you pop them, you let the lower color, whatever color your base bead is or whatever color is on the other side of your shard, show through. Heat is the important part to try and get, uh, the important ingredient to get the webbing to happen. You've got to superheat your shard to open it up. And if you can't keep control of that much glass and superheat it, then heat one section, cool it down, and then go to your next section and heat that section, and then cool it down, and just go around your bead that way. You can see some webbing, I don't see a whole lot but I do see some and I think this is going to be a super cool bead once it cools down. I'm just trying to get my um, end to pucker a little bit more up on the top there. I did it a little bit thin. So now I'm just shaping this bead a little bit so it's not quite so wonky. It is currently super wonky. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the glass up towards the top of the bead so I heat up where I want the glass to go as well as where I want the glass to come from. This is going to be a cool one once it cools down. I see some turquoise coming through. I see the, um, the dark reaction between the silver and the ivory and the turquoise and the ivory. Not convinced about the shape of this bead. It's still a little wampus as the saying goes, but it's not about the shape of our bead at this point in time. It's about the shards that we're using, and I'd love for you guys to try different shards and give us all your recipes as you go so that we can see what everybody's working with and see what kind of shards we like to use and see what they're looking like. So I hope people will share. I'm going to go ahead and share all the ones that I've made today. 
um, and I'll give you the recipes of those as well. And I hope we have fun this month. Thanks a lot for joining in. Bye now.